Spencer Percival 1809-1812. Spencer Percival, born on November 1, 1762, into a politically engaged family, emerged as a prominent figure in British politics during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The son of an accomplished politician, Percival inherited a predisposition for public service. Educated at Harrow and Trinity College, Cambridge, he began his legal career, eventually becoming a barrister in the Middle Temple. Percival's political ascent was steady, marked by his election as Member of Parliament for Northampton in 1796. His sharp legal mind and commitment to conservative values quickly garnered attention within political circles. In 1809, Percival reached the pinnacle of his political career when he assumed the role of Prime Minister. His tenure, while relatively short-lived, was marked by significant challenges and complexities, both domestically and internationally. Percival's premiership held immense historical importance, as he presided over a critical period in British history. The early 19th century was marked by the ongoing Napoleonic Wars, economic turbulence, and social unrest. As the head of the British government during these tumultuous times, Percival faced the daunting task of navigating the nation through the complexities of war, economic instability, and political discontent. His leadership was characterized by a steadfast commitment to traditional values and a conservative approach to governance. Percival grappled with the economic challenges posed by the war effort, the implications of industrialization, and the need to maintain order amidst growing societal discontent. Evaluating his policies and decisions provides valuable insights into the political landscape of the time and sheds light on the broader socio-economic changes occurring in Britain during the early 19th century. Tragically, Percival's time in office was abruptly cut short by an event that would forever distinguish him in British history, his assassination. On the fateful evening of May 11, 1812, as Percival entered the House of Commons, he was fatally shot by John Bellingham, a merchant with a personal grievance. This shocking act marked the first and only assassination of a British Prime Minister to date. The circumstances surrounding Percival's assassination serve as a haunting foreshadowing of the complexities and dangers inherent in political leadership. The event not only wrought an abrupt end to his political career but also left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the nation. Percival's tragic fate adds a layer of poignancy to the analysis of his leadership, forcing historians and scholars to grapple with the what-ifs and ponder the potential trajectory of British history had his life not been cut short in such a violent manner. In examining Percival's life and career, it becomes clear that his legacy extends far beyond his policies and political decisions. His assassination serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of political life and the unpredictable nature of historical events. As we delve into the nuances of his leadership, it is essential to keep in mind the overarching shadow cast by the abrupt and untimely end that awaited Spencer Percival. Spencer Percival's early life was shaped by the political milieu in which he was born. Coming from a family deeply involved in politics, Percival inherited a legacy of public service. His father, the second Earl of Egmont, was a prominent politician, serving as First Lord of the Admiralty, and his mother, Catherine Compton, came from another influential political family. Born on November 1, 1762, in Audley Square, London, Percival was raised in an environment that valued education, political engagement, and public responsibility. The Percival family's social standing and political connections afforded young Spencer opportunities for a quality education. He attended Harrow School, a renowned institution known for producing many influential figures, where he began to cultivate the intellectual and social skills that would later contribute to his success in politics. Subsequently, he continued his education at Trinity College, Cambridge, where he honed his academic abilities. Percival's entry into politics was a gradual but determined process. His legal career began in earnest when he was called to the bar at the Middle Temple in 1786. His legal background would later prove valuable in his political career, providing him with a solid foundation for navigating the intricate legal aspects of governance. Percival's political journey gained momentum when he entered the House of Commons as the Member of Parliament for Northampton in 1796. His eloquence and keen intellect quickly distinguished him among his peers, earning him the respect of both colleagues and adversaries. As a member of the Tory party, 
Percival aligned himself with conservative principles, advocating for the maintenance of traditional values and resisting radical change. His rise through the political ranks was steady and marked by a series of appointments that showcased his growing influence. In 1807, he became Chancellor of the Exchequer in the government of the Duke of Portland. Percival's performance in this crucial economic role further solidified his reputation as a capable and pragmatic politician, paving the way for his eventual ascension to the highest office in the land. Throughout his political career, Spencer Percival forged key alliances and affiliations that played a crucial role in his rise to power. As a member of the Tory party, he aligned himself with like-minded individuals who shared a commitment to conservative values and a strong belief in the established order. His association with influential figures within the party, including William Pitt the Younger, contributed significantly to his political standing. Percival's political affiliations extended beyond his party to strategic alliances within Parliament. His ability to form alliances and work collaboratively with different factions enabled him to navigate the complex political landscape of his time. These alliances were instrumental in securing key positions, culminating in his appointment as Prime Minister in 1809. In 1809, the Duke of Portland, the incumbent Prime Minister and leader of the Tory government, faced health issues that rendered him unable to carry out his duties effectively. The deteriorating health of the Duke created a power vacuum within the government, prompting a need for a new leader who could navigate the complex challenges of the time. Spencer Percival emerged as a consensus candidate due to his prior experience as Chancellor of the Exchequer and his reputation for competence and integrity. Percival's appointment was not only a result of his individual capabilities but also a response to the broader political context. The war with Napoleon's France and the economic strains it imposed required a leader with a steady hand and a pragmatic approach. As a known and respected figure within the Tory party, Percival was seen as someone who could bring stability to the government and effectively address the pressing issues facing Britain. Upon assuming the role of Prime Minister, Percival inherited a set of formidable challenges from his predecessor, the Duke of Portland. The most pressing issue was the continuation of the Napoleonic Wars, which placed a significant burden on Britain's resources and economy. The conflict demanded effective military strategies, diplomatic maneuvering, and a robust economic plan to sustain the war effort. Economically, Britain faced challenges associated with the cost of war, disruptions to trade, and the need to manage the national debt. The Industrial Revolution was transforming the economic landscape, presenting both opportunities and challenges. Percival had to contend with the delicate balance of supporting industrial growth while addressing the social and economic implications of rapid industrialization. In terms of foreign policy, Percival continued Britain's commitment to the war against Napoleon, overseeing military strategies and diplomatic efforts. He collaborated with allied nations and worked to maintain a balance of power on the European continent. His leadership during this critical period would contribute to the ultimate defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Domestically, Percival faced the task of managing social discontent and maintaining order. He implemented policies to address food shortages, enacted legislation to regulate working conditions, and took steps to improve social welfare. While not without controversy, these measures reflected Percival's pragmatic approach to governance and his recognition of the need for social and economic reforms in response to the changing dynamics of the time. Social and political unrest posed significant challenges during Percival's time in office. The combination of economic hardships, food shortages, and discontent among the working class fueled social unrest. The Industrial Revolution brought about rapid urbanization and changes in labor practices, leading to social inequalities and labor disputes. To manage these challenges, Percival's government implemented measures to address the immediate concerns of the population. In response to food shortages, legislation was enacted to regulate the grain trade and stabilize prices. While these policies aimed to alleviate immediate hardships, they also highlighted the government's recognition of the need to address socioeconomic issues at their roots. Percival was faced with the delicate task of balancing the demands of the industrial workforce with maintaining order and stability. The government responded to labor unrest with a combination of legislative and punitive measures. The Combination Acts of 1799 and 1800, which restricted workers' ability to form trade unions, reflected the government's attempt to suppress perceived threats to social order. 
However, these acts were eventually repealed in 1824, indicating the evolving nature of labor relations in the years following Percival's leadership. Percival's government was marked by both legislative achievements and shortcomings in addressing domestic issues. On the positive side, his administration enacted several key pieces of legislation aimed at addressing social and economic challenges. The Corn Laws of 1815, for instance, sought to protect domestic agriculture by imposing tariffs on imported grain. While controversial and criticized for exacerbating food shortages and raising prices for consumers, the laws were seen as a response to the immediate concerns of the agricultural sector. In terms of social reform, Percival's government introduced the Factory Acts, which aimed to improve working conditions in factories and protect child laborers. These early efforts to regulate industrial practices laid the groundwork for future labor reforms in the 19th century. The Napoleonic era, spanning from the late 18th century to the early 19th century, was a time of great upheaval and conflict in Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, the military and political genius who rose to power in France, sought to establish a European empire under his control. As Napoleon's forces conquered vast territories, Britain found itself in a protracted struggle against France and its allies. Britain's position in the Napoleonic era was defined by its resistance to Napoleonic expansionism and its commitment to preventing French dominance in Europe. The British Isles served as a vital bastion of opposition against Napoleon's ambitions. The Royal Navy, with its maritime supremacy, played a crucial role in protecting British interests, disrupting French trade, and maintaining control over vital sea routes. Spencer Percival's approach to foreign relations during the Napoleonic era was characterized by a commitment to alliances, diplomacy, and the preservation of British interests. As Prime Minister, Percival understood the importance of maintaining a coalition of European powers to counterbalance the might of Napoleon's forces. One of Percival's key diplomatic achievements was the successful continuation of the Peninsular War, a conflict fought on the Iberian Peninsula against the French occupation. Percival's government provided crucial support to Spanish and Portuguese forces, working in alliance with other European powers, most notably the Duke of Wellington. The Peninsular War became a pivotal theater of conflict, diverting French resources and ultimately contributing to Napoleon's downfall. One of the notable military outcomes during Percival's tenure was the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Although Percival did not live to witness this decisive battle, his policies and alliances paved the way for the coalition forces, led by the Duke of Wellington, to achieve victory over Napoleon. The defeat at Waterloo marked the end of the Napoleonic era and solidified Britain's position as a key player in shaping the post-Napoleonic European order. Percival's government also faced the challenges of naval warfare, with the Royal Navy engaging in blockades and naval battles to disrupt French trade and isolate Napoleon's forces. The maritime strategy employed by Britain under Percival's leadership contributed significantly to the overall success of the British war effort. The assassination of Spencer Percival on the evening of May 11, 1812, was a shocking and unprecedented event in British history. The circumstances leading up to this tragic incident reveal a complex interplay of personal grievances, political tensions, and the volatile social atmosphere of the time. John Bellingham, the man who assassinated Percival, was a merchant with a personal vendetta against the government. Having faced financial difficulties and imprisonment while in Russia, Bellingham harbored a deep-seated resentment, blaming the government for not adequately addressing his grievances. Despite his grievances being largely personal, Bellingham perceived himself as a victim of government neglect. On the fateful day, as Percival entered the House of Commons, Bellingham seized the opportunity, drawing a concealed pistol and firing a fatal shot into the Prime Minister's chest. Percival succumbed to his injuries almost immediately, marking the first and only assassination of a British Prime Minister in history. Evaluating Spencer Percival's legacy involves a nuanced examination of his contributions and failures during a pivotal period in British history. His leadership as Prime Minister from 1809 to 1812 occurred amid the challenges of the Napoleonic Wars, economic instability, and social unrest. Contributions Economic Stewardship Percival's government implemented measures to address economic challenges, including fiscal reforms and support for industrial growth. His focus on stabilizing the currency and managing the national debt contributed to the financial stability necessary for sustaining the war effort. 
Foreign Policy and Military Strategy Percival successfully navigated the complexities of foreign relations during the Napoleonic era. His commitment to alliances and support for military campaigns, particularly in the Peninsular War, played a crucial role in resisting Napoleon's expansion. Social Reforms Percival's government addressed social issues through legislation such as the Factory Acts, aimed at improving working conditions. While the measures were limited compared to later reforms, they marked an acknowledgement of the need for social change. Failures. Restrictive policies. The Combination Acts, which restricted the formation of trade unions, reflected a conservative approach that limited workers' rights and drew criticism for hindering the natural evolution of labor relations. Resistance to radical reform. Percival's government, influenced by conservative principles, was cautious about embracing radical social and political reforms. This resistance, while understandable in the context of the times, limited the extent of transformative change. Internal challenges. Managing domestic discontent and social unrest proved challenging. While Percival implemented measures to address immediate concerns, the government faced criticism for not fully addressing the root causes of discontent. Spencer Percival's leadership, both in its successes and challenges, left a lasting imprint on the course of British history. His commitment to stability during a turbulent era laid the groundwork for subsequent developments in the 19th century. The economic measures implemented by his government set the stage for the industrial and economic expansion that would define the Victorian era. Percival's collaboration with military leaders, particularly the Duke of Wellington, contributed to the ultimate defeat of Napoleon and solidified Britain's position as a major European power. His pragmatic approach to governance, marked by a careful balance between tradition and adaptation, reflected the challenges of navigating a rapidly changing world. While Percival's assassination remains a somber episode, it serves as a reminder of the complexities inherent in political leadership. The tragic end to his career prompted a reassessment of security measures and influenced the broader discourse on the relationship between citizens and the state. In conclusion, Spencer Percival's legacy is one of multifaceted contributions, challenges, and the enduring impact of a personal tragedy on the trajectory of British history. His brief but impactful tenure as Prime Minister, coupled with the historical significance of his assassination, cements his place as a distinctive figure in the annals of British political history. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future.